Hi, this is Tim O'Connell with the Department of Natural Resource Ecology and Management at Oklahoma State University. For the next couple of minutes, we're going to talk about natural resources and ecosystem services. Natural resources are those raw materials from the environment that sustain all life and human industry. So water, wood from trees, uh, meat from game animals. These are things that really sustain everything we do and all life on the planet. We can divide natural resources into two broad categories. The first are renewables. Renewables are those natural resources that can be replenished on a time scale that's relevant to human life. Sometimes that means it's our management that makes them available for us, and sometimes that happens naturally. So if you think about resources that can be recycled or reused on the period of months to maybe decades, that's what a renewable natural resource is. In contrast, we know that some resources are non-renewable, and this includes things like fossil fuels. They really can't be replenished except on geologic timescales. So we can get a little bit better at extracting them using technology, but we can't make more on any sort of timescale that's relevant for us. Our ability to use natural resources provides us with some benefits. Those benefits we call ecosystem services. These are benefits provided freely by ecosystems and we can define them as the benefits we obtain from using natural resources. Ecosystem services are normally identified in four distinct categories, from the more basic to somewhat more ethereal. At the most basic level we have supporting natural resources. These are processes and functions in the nat natural world that make life possible on our planet. Think of things like photosynthesis, this amazing biochemical pathway that takes sunlight energy and converts it into food that we can then consume. It also, as a byproduct, makes oxygen that we breathe. So without photosynthesis on our planet, uh, life as we know it would not exist. It's a very basic process that happens on our planet and a supporting ecosystem service. The next level would be regulating services. These are also sort of ecological processes or geologic functions that um, have some bearing over the abundance or availability of materials or species on our planet. So things like um, erosion control, the ability for soil to be held in place so that plants can grow on it as opposed to just blowing away by the wind or washing away by the water. That's a regulating uh, ecosystem service. Another would be something like nutrients returning to the environment through decomposition. So things like uh, fungi that might be breaking down the carbon in a fallen log and then ultimately returning the nutrients of that log to the soil so they can be taken up by another organism. Those are regulating ecosystem services. Without regulating ecosystem services, some species and some uh, features of our natural world could become too rare or too abundant, and we need those services. Next would be those sorts of ecosystem services that we can most directly relate to as things we use. And we call those provisioning ecosystem services. It could be grass that we manage to feed our livestock and then we then have the ability to eat those livestock to drive nourishment from them. It might be the clean water that we take for granted so often that we get to drink and that we get to put on our crops. These are provisioning ecosystem services, the ability of ecosystems to give us food and give us water and give us clean air and things like that. Finally, there's this last category of ecosystem service that's very difficult to put a number value on, but it involves our enjoyment of the natural world. We may seek out uh, nature in ways that uh, contribute to our lives only in that they make us feel better. Maybe they give us a sense of happiness or a sense of purpose. We call these cultural ecosystem services. Even though it's harder to put a dollar figure on them, they're no less important than any of the others. And people will invest tremendous amounts of their time and energy pursuing cultural ecosystem services. So that's a very quick introduction into how natural resources and ecosystem services interrelate. Again, natural resources are those raw materials from the environment that sustain life and human industry. And ecosystem services are those benefits that ecosystems provide freely to us, usually divided into supporting, regulating, provisioning, and cultural services.